Hi everybody. So we've learned what a radian is. We've learned how to measure angles in radians, how to um, convert back and forth from radians and degrees. We've learned how to measure angles on the coordinate plane, and we've talked about how to subdivide our two pi radians in a complete circle into pieces on the circle that I've shown here on the screen. And I've added the, the uh, radian measurements already to save us a little bit of time. So what we need to talk about now, just very briefly, is coterminal angles using radians. We talked about coterminal angles with degrees a number of videos ago, and we decided that how we measure coterminal angles in degrees is that we add and subtract multiples of 360 degrees in order to get our coterminal angles. Let's remind ourselves what coterminal angles are before we begin. Remember that we always measure angles on the coordinate plane with respect to the positive x-axis. That's our initial side. And our terminal side is where we end up. So let's just say we go to pi over 3 here. Okay? When I measure that angle this way, which is the positive direction, I get the measurement pi over 3. And we talked about that in an earlier video. But the coterminal angle for that is going the other way, or at least one coterminal angle. So what if I go to clockwise? What if I go clockwise around this circle instead of counterclockwise? I know I'm going to have a negative angle, but how much of a negative angle have I actually gone? I've gone three quarters of the circle plus one additional line, right? I went one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, and then one additional pi piece here. Pun unintended. P-I-P, P-I-E piece, okay? One additional piece of the pie there going the other way, all right? What if, what is that angle measurement? So let's take a look at it in the positive direction then. If I were to actually go three times around, or th I'm sorry, three quarters plus a little bit, where would I end up? One, two, three, and a little bit. One more piece. That's 5 pi over 3. That's how much that angle is. But since we went in the negative direction, we can say that that angle going around the blue here now is negative 5 pi over 3 radians. So pi over 3 and negative 5 pi over 3 are coterminal angles. One is measured by going clockwise around the circle, that's the negative, and one is measured by going counterclockwise around the circle, that's the positive. The red is our positive angle, the blue here is our negative angle. Okay? Actually, what I probably should do, let me do this real quick, let me get rid of this green so it doesn't confuse you. There we go. Not quite as cluttered and confusing there now, is it? I hope not. All right, so let's get back to what we talked about with coterminal angles and degrees. We concluded in another video that in order to find coterminal angles, in order to find coterminal angles in degrees, we add and subtract multiples of 360. That's what we did but we're not dealing with degrees anymore. Now we're dealing with radians. So what if I went an additional 360 in the positive direction? So what if I did this? What if instead of stopping there, I went all the way around and came back to it? What have I done? I've gone 2 pi, that's the one complete time around the circle, that's going from 0 back to 0, plus that additional pi over 3. 
Let me do this in black so you can see it better. So I've got 2 pi plus pi over 3. So how much of an angle is that? Well, we're going to have to do a little bit of adding of fractions here. Don't get too scared. They're just fractions. Fractions are your friends. Okay? How do we add unlike fractions? We have to find a common denominator. And in this case, the common denominator for 1 and 3 is going to be 3, isn't it? And if I multiply the bottom by 3, I've got to multiply the top by 3 as well. And I add the pi over 3, what do I get? 7 pi over 3. Don't I? So, here's another coterminal angle. And how did I get it? I got it by adding 2 pi to my angle measurement. But not I didn't really add 2 pi, did I? I added 6 pi over 3 because that would give me a common denominator. So if I added another 6 pi over 3, where would I end up? 13 pi over 3, another terminal coterminal angle. Another 6 pi, 19 pi over 3, and so on. So I can continue as long as I want. These are all coterminal angles. This is going once around the circle and back to pi over 3. This is going twice around the circle and going back to pi over 3. This is going three times around the circle and going back to pi over 3. But remember when we did degrees, we said we could also subtract 360? Well, let's do that. What if I had pi over 3 and subtracted a full turn? Pi over 3 minus, and remember what we did with our like denominators, 6 pi over 3. What do we get? Lo and behold, we get negative 5 pi over 3. We didn't have to go through all that mess to find this, did we? Okay, all you had to do was subtract 2 pi from that measurement. You get negative pi over 3. And our additional ones, if we subtracted another 6 pi over 3, we'd get a negative 11 pi over 3, wouldn't we? Minus another 6 pi over 3, negative 17 pi over 3. So just like degrees, no difference. We add and subtract multiples of a full revolution. But in this case, the full revolution of the circle is 2 pi not 360 degrees. And the only time this gets tricky is when you've got a denominator, and most of the time you do. You have to look at the denominator and decide what would give you 2 pi. So for example, if I had a measurement, say, oh, I don't know, 3 pi over 5, and I wanted to add 2 pi to that, what would I really be adding? multiply top and bottom by 5, I'd get 10 pi over 5. Wouldn't I? I'd get 13 pi over 5. So you need to look at the denominator and then double that denominator in order to get how many pi's you add or subtract each time. So if my denominator is over 6, what am I going to add and subtract multiples of? 12 pi over 6, right? If my denominator was 7, I'd be adding and subtracting 14 pi over 7. If my denominator is 4, I'd be adding and subtracting 8 pi over 4. In each of these cases, those fractions are equal to 2 pi. Okay, let's do one just to be sure. Just want to make sure you've got it. I want to do one more quick example. Let's say, let's just do a very, very strange one. Let's say I had 9 pi over 11 radians. And I want to know what are my coterminal angles, or at least one positive and one negative. So what could I do? Add 2 pi to it. What did we just talk about? We need to convert that 2 pi into something that has an 11 denominator. So what would we put on top? 2 times 11 is 22 pi. Right? So my first coterminal angle would be 31 pi over 11. My first negative one, minus 22 over 11, would be what? Negative 13 pi over 11, wouldn't it? Sure would. Okay? So that's how we find coterminal angles in radians. We add and subtract multiples of 2 pi, one full revolution. 
and remember to use a common denominator that matches the denominator of the angle you're looking at. Thanks a lot.